In this video, I'll be running through three quick ways that you can increase AOV as an e-commerce brand. Number one is product bundles. Now I've got an example of what product bundles actually look like here on this particular brand, but it doesn't necessarily have to be stacking the same product. Stacking the same product does work really, really well as you can discount it by having multiple SKUs in there as it cuts on shipping costs, but also bundling dynamically between B and C products can be really helpful for increasing profitability and moving stock that is generally speaking hard to move. So the benefits of bundles is number one, it immediately incentivizes higher AOVs and it creates new landing pages that you can drive paid traffic to. Number two, it allows for testing new angles and then having consistency from the front end of the ads all the way to the landing page. And what I mean exactly by that is you can start creating bundles like family bundles where it might be four towels to a smaller, to a larger, and then you also have a floor mat, for example, in this particular instance. Then on the front end, you can bundle that up, advertise it as a family bundle, and then drop people directly onto a landing page that has relevancy and consistency. And you can do this quite creatively across the board, depending on your individual niche and your individual product ranges. And number three, which I sort of already touched on, is that it allows you to move type C products and discount through them. Now, what exactly I mean by that is if you're selling a $100 towel and you have 50% contribution margins on it, and then you have hand towels that don't sell that well, it's a $20 product, you have 50% contribution margins on them, you can put them together in a bundle, discount by $10, but you're only discounting and losing the profitability on the hand towel, but you're keeping all of the profitability on the regular towel. And so you can still move the regular towels at seemingly full price, and just get rid of the hand towel stock by creatively putting that bundle together. Bundles are by far the number one way that I've seen for a brand to increase AOV immediately overnight, as long as you start redirecting all the traffic as well to the bundle pages. Number two is cross sells and upsells. Now this is both on the landing page, in cart, as well as post purchase, as well as post purchase EDMs. So on the lander, this is what it would look like. It's where you have multiple SKUs set up where there's discount brackets as you start to move up in quantity thresholds. In cart, it looks something like this. So once you've added a product to cart, you'll get a bar up the top here, which will incentivize a certain amount of spend for a gift, which in this case is free shipping. And then you also have cross sells and upsells available within cart that are going to dynamically change depending on what product you add. Post purchase looks like this. So once you've actually made your order, you'll get redirected to a landing page that's going to prompt you to add an additional product to your cart. The great thing about post-purchase one-click upsells is you already have the payment information of the customer. So all they have to do is click one button and you immediately cache that payment and it gets added to their existing order. So it doesn't require multiple steps. They don't need to go back to the website and go all the way back through the checkout process. It's one click and it's added in. This also works incredibly well if you have a direct offer. So if you're going to run something like this, you want to be running it with an offer on that post purchase one click upsell. This is also what a post uh, purchase one click upsell can look like. You don't have to redirect to a specific landing page. You can redirect to the regular um, checkout page with the order confirmation, with the shipping details, etc., And then you can strategically add discounting in around. So you can see here that they've got a reorder button for 15% off. Up here, they've got get 30% off this product and you can quickly add that in. And then over here, they've got another uh, discount and then they've got more products. So there's a lot going on on this post-purchase checkout page, but this just goes to show how much you actually can do to try to incentivize higher AOVs after the purchase has been made. You can also do post-purchase EDMs. So here's an example. The second you purchase from this brand, you'll get this email within one to two minutes. That's also going to try to upsell you and cross-sell you on different products. Now, even more interestingly, you don't necessarily have to have these cross-sell emails be set up as a really clean, nice graphic. Instead, here's an email that I used to run that would convert at 90%. And this is just a single plain text suggestion. And the reason why these work so well is because it looks like it's fully customized and tailored to you as the individual consumer. So in this instance, it's thank you for purchasing with us. I just noticed that you bought this product, but you didn't buy this product. 
in case you want to, and then directly objection handling, in case you want to keep your patio heater rust free and protected when you're not using it, I'd highly recommend that you actually add this to your order. I've also gone ahead and added a 40% off discount code to this link for you in case you do want to add it to your order. And then a PS at the end here, so that it looks even more genuine. By the way, if you do actually go and purchase this, it'll ship, ship as a separate order due to the fact that we store these products at different warehouses. And then you can also see the uh, subject line up here at the top here. Hey, is this correct? So I'm calling out, there might be actually an error in your order here. You definitely should have added this. Um, just checking that there was a reason why you didn't. This converted once again at 90%. And the product here, how I actually set this up, which was very, very effective, is that the product was a valuable, the actual cover was a valuable on the website, but I priced it up by 2X. So regular pricing of a patio heater cover across the board is about, in AUD, about 70 to 80 Australian dollars. Um, but I would price it up to 160. So even when you were on the website, no one would buy it because no one wants to pay 160, it's way overpriced. So they would just buy the heater and then within 20 seconds, they would get an email offering a 40% discount off the product. And so I would be selling it at full price in the post-purchase discounting offers. Um, and then on site, if someone was to actually go and buy it, they'd be buying it at 2X. And so the margins on that were um, well above 90%. And so it's important to consider if they're if this is applicable in any way to your brand, if there is a complimentary product that just makes sense to buy and it would be weird if someone didn't and you can frame it in a way and you can angle the email in a way that's like, hey, it's it's strange that you didn't buy this. Um, just in case you do want it, here's a discount code. This will convert very, very well and it'll add tens of thousands of dollars in revenue per month to your store. Number three is threshold offers. Now everyone's seen threshold offers. Almost everyone runs them these days. So that's simply a spend $100, get free shipping. Spend $100, get $10 off, something of that nature. You can have this appear in cart. You can have this appear at the top of the page. There's two important considerations though when you're setting up these threshold offers. Number one is that AOV typically has a bimodal distribution, which we'll touch on in a second. And secondly is that you need to consider mean, median, and mode AOVs. And don't just set your thresholds based on what Shopify says your AOV is. So let's talk about bimodal distribution. If you have a large SKU range, and even if you only have really five to 10 products, you still should have some kind of bimodal distribution across the cohort data of average order value. And the typical reason as to why this is the case is because you're going to have different priced products. You might have a product priced at $60 and a product priced at 150. And so people are either going to be sitting at 60 or 150. And that's why you'll get two bumps in this graph here. Or number two is because returning customers spend a lot more than first time customers. And so you'll end up seeing that the first time customers over here are gonna spend about 40 to $60, but then returning customers will come up and spend about a hundred. In this particular instance, in this particular brand, that is the case. First time customers usually only spend $35, but then returning customers will always come back and buy bundles, which are valued at a hundred dollars and above. So in this instance, we'd want to be setting two offer thresholds, one at 60 and one at 130. That way we're going to be incentivizing both of those cohorts to shift upwards to larger cart sizes. Where people would normally make a mistake here is they would look at the back end of Shopify, which would say that their AOV is $90.15, and then they'd set the typical free shipping at $100. But it makes no sense because if we actually look down here at $90, not many people at all are actually purchasing $90 orders. And these are the people that we'd be trying to incentivize up to 100. Instead, it's really important that we do look at this distribution and identify, okay, majority of people sit at 100. So we need to incentivize this cohort here upwards to about 130, 120. And then over here, most people are sitting about 30 to 40. So we need to incentivize these people up into that 60 to 70 range. And to do so, we would set those thresholds accordingly. Now in regards to mean versus median versus mode and how you should be looking at this. As I just said, we've all seen the classic free shipping over $100, but the dollar amount is almost always set wrong. And the reason being is that marketers will just look at the Shopify AOV number on the back end, and then they'll pick a number that's just slightly higher than that as their offer threshold. What they don't realize is that number one, 
the threshold is set too high, which will just result in no positive impact on AOV. Or number two, they're going to accidentally set the threshold too low, which is going to have the absolute opposite effect of increasing AOV, and they're just going to decrease their contribution margins. Going back to this example over here, in fact, let's go all the way back here. If we went off mean, we would set the free shipping threshold at $100. And then what would happen is all of these people here, which is the majority of our customers, now get free shipping on their orders. And so we're now losing 10 to $15 off every single $100 order. Let's say we make $30, $40 profit on these orders. We've just halved profitability of the brand because we haven't correctly considered where this threshold offer should sit for the maximum profitability of the cohort of average order value. So we don't want that. The solution here is look at median AOV. You can also look at mode. They have different benefits, but typically I would recommend median AOV. It's gonna give you a better representation of what your average customer actually looks like. And it's going to show where the cohort actually sits. In the example below, you can see the brand has a $191 mean and a $240 median. We, well, they initially tried before working with us, setting their shipping offer at 225. It made absolutely no impact at all on the cart size and it just destroyed their margins. We went and actually increased the threshold up to 275 and it's now working. And the reason for that is that they had 500 plus orders for a $39 product. And that was skewing the mean AOV significantly downwards. But if you checked median and mode, you'd realize that we should have been setting it a lot higher. And coming back to this graph here, it was all of these orders down here that skewed the mean so aggressively, but the median, generally speaking, isn't impacted as much by external outliers. So just to recap, number one, product bundles. Every single brand should be bundling in some capacity, even if you only sell one individual SKU bundle that skew into two, three, four products and have discounting thresholds as you elevate in quantity. Number two is cross sells and upsells. You really should have cross sells and upsells on landing pages, in cart, post-purchase, as well as post-purchase EDMs. And the bonus there is to do plain text post-purchase EDMs that look completely customized to the individual user. And then number three is having threshold offers and being very, very strategical and careful with where you're setting those threshold offers. Don't just go in and blindly set an offer. Make sure it makes sense with the unit economics. Make sure you look at the distribution curve of individual orders across average order value and then set them up accordingly to incentivize those cohorts to shift to the right.